Stitches Outside the Lines. This is an exhibition of work by Francis Arnold, Lori Goldman, Emily Marks, Janet McBean, and Hella Merrill, which runs from August 5th through September 26th in Gallery 212 at the Sonoma Community Center on 276 East Napa Street in downtown Sonoma, California. The show is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please come any time during those hours. Admission is free to the public. Stitches Outside the Lines. What do we mean by this title? When you think of stitching, you often picture useful fiber arts like sewing a seam, knitting a scarf, or mending an old pair of jeans. Sure, textiles are an essential element of our daily lives. We are swaddled when we are born, we sleep in linens, we clothe our bodies each day, and we mark life's passages with special garments and fabrics. We even get stitched up after surgery. In contrast to those usual examples, five local artists, Francis Arnold, Lori Goldman, Emily Marks, Janet McBean, and Hella Merrill have chosen to push the boundaries of what we call stitchery, creating unique works that stretch the medium in surprising ways. True, we five are drawn to the artistry of embroidery, crochet, knitting, twisting and weaving, as well as repetitive patterns as of old. For sure, we love designing through the application of one material on another in historical ways, but by incorporating unusual materials, making unique structures, and reflecting on specific themes, our work transcends the expected. Each artist manipulates the craft in her own unique way, allowing the viewer to see fresh perspectives. Stitching means many things to us. It is a way of knitting themes together. Each part can be seen as a different yarn that when combined makes a whole. This can be an individual effort or the work of many hands braided together. I think of the AIDS quilt and other projects like it that share individual stories sewn by many people who don't know each other but come together as a moving response to a health crisis. Stitching can tell stories. Think of that old saw spinning a yarn. Jan Martel, a contemporary author, says, Stories, individual stories, family stories, national stories are what stitch together the disparate elements of human existence into a coherent whole. We are story animals. Our work reflects this aspect often when we make something, especially sculptures that tell of our experiences or our views on current events. We are contributing to the dialogue of life, even if it's just an individual work. Stitching can heal. Many people have turned to the fiber arts during the shelter-in-place period due to COVID-19. Stitching is a contemplative process when we make individual stitches with repetitive motions. Mary Carson, a textile artist says, during my dark time after losing my brother and mother, I turned to slow stitching as a way to get out of my head and take a break from the sadness. Now that they've been gone for a few years, it still provides emotional support. Stitching can form a community of like-minded artists. This show has brought us together sharing our work, thinking about the way we relate to each other in themes, imagery, materials, and size, forms a whole that you can see in this gallery. At first, we weren't sure how the work would all come together. We thought to have each artist have her own area. But in hanging the show, it became clear that mixing the different art pieces was the way to go. And now we see relationships between the objects that are new and make us reflect more deeply. I'd like to show one individual piece from each artist. Frances Arnold created her large wall hanging entitled Resilience after the fire of 2017 in Sonoma. This piece is an homage to the aromatic cedar tree standing behind her house. She had to evacuate because of the fires. It was a scary time of uncertainty, and for some reason she looked to the tree 
as a totem of hope and a touchstone for her return. It is made of hand-painted hemp and embroidered with many, many running stitches that highlight the needles of the tree. Lori Goldman's work entitled George Floyd Mattered was made after she watched the video of Floyd's death on television. She writes, my heart broke watching as George Floyd was brutally murdered by the police on camera. I embroidered my emotions of rage and despair. The bird symbolizes her soul flying free. Lori likes to make use of pre-made fiber materials. This piece is made from cut and sewn socks. She stuffed and then embroidered them, creating allusions to hands and wings. A knitted border completes the work. The sculpture of my own is called Shogun Samurai, my costume for the Trash and Show in 2016. One of the community center's more notable events, the yearly fundraiser called the Trash and Show, raises awareness by inviting artists to make outfits to walk the runway using previously used materials, in short, things that might have otherwise been thrown away. I decided to model and make the costume based on James Clavell's novel Shogun the story of an Englishman cast upon the shores of 16th century Japan. The materials I used were the text from James Clavell's novel, the audio and videotape of the story, old calligraphy paper from Japan, a curtain holder, some horsehair for the paper mask, a child fireman's helmet, plastic horns, cardboard and twine sandals. I knit the tabby socks and the gloves from the audio tape of the novel, crocheted the vest from the videotape, and painted the helmet and mask. I wore it in the trash and show and won first prize. Janet McBean is primarily a wire artist. She likes to say she draws in wire. Her work not only highlights the line drawing aspects of her compositions, but she also plays with shadow and depth. The outlines become the reflection on the wall and add to the piece. If you look closely, the bends and curves in her art resemble stitches, twisting back and forth much like sewing. This piece, Bird in Stitches, does have sewing in it. The bird is stitched in thread while the wire defines the hardness of the branches. Hella Merrill is another artist who usually works in metal. Her large copper wall pieces are often abstract. Commanding and beautiful, they are very different from the whimsical piece included in Stitches Outside the Lines. Her sculpture is entitled The Wired Woman. It was created with telephone wire. She crocheted the top and then arranged the skirt to fall gracefully down to the bottom. Hella recalls that the inspiration for using the wire started when she was in Kenya, where she saw telephone wire transformed into sculpture and other objects. I hope you can come and see our show in person and perhaps maybe inspired to try your own stitches outside the lines. I should mention that Lori Goldman and I are offering an in-person class here at the Sonoma Community Center entitled Stitches with Unusual Materials on September 18th, a Saturday from 10 to 3 p.m. Please go to the website sonomacommunitycenter.org for more information.